What's up? Welcome to today's tutorial. One of you had requested that I do a tutorial using the Dark Matter Kit from Pat McGrath. I couldn't get rid- Ooh. Thick with everywhere. Ultraviolet pigment, the black, silver, white. Let's see. Here, 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 here. It's so organized. Comes with four pigments, the eye gloss, the eye pencil, and a brush, which I don't know where it is right now. My eyes are tearing like crazy, so I wanted to just let you know this is a talk through of just the eyes, fast forwarding through the rest of the face. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. And I of course forgot to use the eye gloss because I'm a stupid goo. Definitely use this for photos only. It will make your eyeshadow crease because it is a gloss and not meant to be long wearing. I do love the effect the Astral White pigment gave for long wear and if you were going to wear this to a party or an event that you don't need your eyeshadow to crease for, you know what I mean? If just for the photo, I would have slapped on the gloss, but I forgot. But those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items that come in the $130 kit. I've never purchased a Pat McGrath kit before and I thought this was the right time because this blue is, is simply gorgeous. Just unparalleled color payoff. The pigment is beautiful. I love how it came out. You can really do a beautiful smoky eye. I would wear this for the day because I'm crazy. And I really enjoyed working with these colors, these pigments, and I hope you enjoy. Without further ado, if you want to see how we got this Pat McGrath Dark Matter 006 kit eye look, then keep on watching. Because we're focusing on the eyes, I've already applied my base as well as my Urban Decay Primer Potion in the shade Fix and then I set that with some loose powder. I found the best thing when dealing with the pigments is to bake under the eyes and wipe off the excess. I tried the other way and the color is so pigmented that when you wipe it away from your skin, it sticks and you have these blue streaks and they're very tough to get off. So, I found this works a little better for me. You really want to pack this on because the pigment is beautiful, but it is very aggressive and it will get everywhere. I put it even on the corners of my nose because it will drop onto the, into that corner and stick and it'll be a pain to get out. So this is step one. I'll start by applying a transition shade and this is the Colored Rain Single Shadows and we'll go in with the color Gingerbread to warm up my crease. Taking a Morphe M505 with that shade, we're just going to lightly graze the crease, not too much. This serves as our transition shade and will help blow out the black and blue colors. And just to go a shade deeper with the Hot Cocoa eyeshadow, same brush, to the outer portion of my lid and to the outer V. You could go in several ways. I think the best for the eye look I wish to achieve is to first apply the eye cold pencil the kit includes. It sets very quickly and is hard to spread. So I find that if I apply it just to the center of my lid and go in with the shadow onto the outer and inner Vs, that's best, but we'll see. It's super black, but it does not move, which is a great thing, especially for the waterline. In terms of an eye base, if you want to work with a creamier pencil that will actually spread, you can do that. I wanted to stick to as much to the kit as possible. I obviously dipped out some with those crease shades, but you know, you do our best. Just with a concealer brush, I'm just blurring out the edges, but not really. You see it's not moving at all, but that's fine because this is getting covered with the blue shade. You could try to shape it into like circles. They just kind of look like flames, black flames. And now with their black shade, I am taking a Smith 253 brush, just a small shade of brush, and now going in on the corners to connect with that pencil we just applied. 
just a touch because we are going back in after we applied the blue shade, which is, I think, what we're all waiting for, let's be honest. This is an outrageously beautiful color. It has tones of blue, some purple in there, depending on how the light catches it. Get ready to get these brushes dirty and clean them after, because, you know, the blue will not leave unless you wash these out. With a Luxie 213 and in the blue pigment, I'm going to pack it on carefully onto the black. If you swipe, the blue will fall out. It will fall out anyway, but we are minimizing that by packing and not swiping. And I am not wetting the brush, just so you realize the color payoff of this product. It's, it, I mean, mind-blowing. And work patiently. I'm working in small sections, patting in a bit at a time. So again, I don't get as much fallout as if I were to swipe. And for the sake of demoing, I wanted to use that pencil. I would have gone in with something creamier so the black base could have spread better and the blue to show up more. But it's all good because we are going to apply the black again and smoke this out. So, no worries at all. Black pigment with that smaller shader brush from Smith. Now back to the outer corners. And we're packing this in first and then blending after. And again, I am packing on. Also with the black shade. Take your time. If you are in a rush with this eye look, good luck. I am very slow when it comes to these very smoky eye looks because you have to work in layers and in sections. And especially when there's a lot of blending, you gotta apply, blend, apply, blend. Because you will blend out some of the color and for it to show up well. Especially if you're gonna get photographed, you want that to be on your lid. Taking a small dome brush, this is a Morphe E17 with the black pigment. Carefully now starting to, I lied actually. I'm gonna take my Luxie 213 again, 229, which is a little brown and dirty, but it should be fine. I'm gonna carefully now start to deepen up the crease with the black. And I'm applying very, very light pressure. You don't want to apply so much pressure that the skin pulls because then the shadow will skip and won't look smooth. To ensure really smooth blending, a very light touch, and again, take your time. I'm barely grazing the skin. And that's why it's important to have a great brush that's soft because you want it to do the work for you and not have to apply pressure for it to make it happen. We're doing okay. And I'm just swirling it in. Swirl and graze, swirl and graze is all you gotta do. And you see applying those warmer shades kinda helps diffuse the color. And, I, and you don't have to do this step. You could go in straight up black and blue but I find that with my skin tone it helps to have warmer shades on the crease first and helps blend out the black and the blue but again totally your preference I'm not going to take it out so far just yet I want to complete the lower lash line first and then I will take it more into that sharper V on the outer corner to play with some of these highlighter shades this is the astral white pigment that has uh, like a blue reflect to it and I'm gonna take my finger and lightly pat that oh Look how quickly that changes the blue it's crazy and unreal pigment like Insane I can't no No, and I didn't even wet the brush as I've mentioned with the blue pigment and I can't even imagine how it will look wet with this pigment. We do have the gloss. I wouldn't recommend though applying gloss if you're going out with this look 
definitely photos only for shoe for something you're just gonna take a picture of that for <laughs> or else that your your shadow will crease for sure I'm gonna leave on my bake because even though with the lower lash line there's less of a risk for fallout it still will happen because again these are very pigmented and yeah let's go in on this lower lash line going back again with the eye coal smudger now to the rim and because my fingers are a little blue I'm taking my beauty blender to gently pull down and apply this pencil getting a little messy with it because again the black really helps set up the blue so it shows and we're gonna smudge all of this into our lash line it will be cool to go blue pigment again and this is actually called the ultraviolet blue pigment the official name with again the Morphe Y22 and lightly grazing my lower lash line beware contact wearers you're gonna get a lot of pigment in your eyeballs is simply unavoidable with a product like this it's just tough to keep that from happening and I am really packing in the blue I want my lower lash line to be powwow this look is blue and you will see it now with the black pigment which is officially named dark matter pigment with the same pencil brush now to the outer corner and I'm packing this in. I want this to show up black. Again with our Luxie 229, I'm gonna lightly blend the lower lash line into the lid and then start to pull out this point a little more. Yeah, light pressure, don't rush, take your time. I think I want to go a little more crazy and combine the dark matter with the ultraviolet all on the same Luxie brush and just start to pull this out a little more to make it ultra dramatic. I kind of like my smoky eyes typically to look messy. Just just teetering on the messy grunge side because why not if you're gonna go smoky go in or not at all and now with our fluffier brush we had started with grazing the edges uh, just a touch just make sure everything's blended and now for funsies I want to take that astral white pigment with my pencil brush to the center of my lower lash line and just pat it in there and you know what I think I want to get some Max Fix Plus hold on I'm gonna lightly spritz that astral white pigment color see how it shows up oh yeah I'm gonna bring it down a touch like I'm crying tears of astral white pigment Now with the Mercury Pigment, same pencil brush to the inner corner. Oh boy, that, I love this color. It's like silver, but pewter. It's a bit of like that pewter character to it, which I love because it's not so stark silver, but has that metallic sheen to it. Mm. So as you see, we have a bunch of fallout and with that, I am going to take my smaller brush fur and just carefully dust away near my nose and then out towards my temples. And I still got some here on my nose. That's why it's ultra important you put that powder in well and don't be afraid to pack it in because that pigment will stick. There's a lot going on in the lid, and with that, I'm not gonna do a wing, but I will apply some lashes. And today's lashes are from Lily Galici in the style Britney Bear. And while we wait for our lashes to dry, let's go in on the rest of the face.
finish it off with Lips Burberry's Lip Contour in the shade Light and Dose of Colors Lip Gloss in Undress. And you know what's the finishing touch. And that's the finished look. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope this video helped. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And any eyeshadow kits, looks, palettes that you have that you are having trouble using, coming up with creative ways in using them, let me know down below. I would love to play with makeup. It's my thing, as you know. And until next time, I'll see you on here again. Bye.